Hi travelers, Tara here, and this is going to be Elemental Fire for November 2018. So this is going to cover the signs of Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. This is a general reading and the messages will not resonate with everyone. That <clears throat> will require a personal reading. Um, by the way, I am uh, starting today taking bookings for the my yearly Pay What You Want. And what that is, is it is a three card reading. Uh, it is done in video format, so you will get to download it and keep it uh, and view it as long as you need to. And how do you get that three card reading is you simply make a donation. Um, the easiest way probably for you to take part in this, and it starts today and will be ending uh, on the 4th, is to sign up for the free newsletter uh, because I'm gonna send out the last call uh, later this afternoon or this evening so you want to make sure that you want to get in on that um, you can click the I there in the right hand corner of the video and that will take you directly over to the website to sign up for the free newsletter um, website members there's going to be a hole on the 24 monthly videos on the website while I um, deal with this particular um, thing and I do this every year as a way to give back so if you've always wanted to get a reading with me or um, to um, just get a reading um, this is a, a simple easy way to do it it is one question and one question only um, and uh, I do hope that some of you will join me um, also, uh, for those of you who've already participated, because I, I opened it up to early booking. So for those of you who've already gotten your, your pay what you want reading, thank you so much for joining. For those of you who have signed up to the newsletter and joined the website uh, membership, I want to welcome you and thank you so much for that. Um, right now we are uh, in kind of a weird time astrologically. We have uh, Uranus. I think at zero Taurus, which is opposing Venus retrograde at zero Scorpio. Um, for those of you website members, you can go and read on the astrological axes. They oppose each other. So this is going to be your personal finances and values versus uh, those that you have uh, in uh, partnership with other people. This could even be organizations and charities and um humanitarian groups things of that nature uh, Scorpio typically rules um, those type of financial agreements that are deadly serious but with a sexual component so in other words this could be about um, child support and alimony mortgages um, loans credit cards taxes wills inheritances those kinds of things so they're typically when there's an opposition that means that you are either conflicted within yourself about something or that uh, there is somebody uh, who is in opposition against you um, at the same time we have mercury who is going to be um, he's in the pre-shadow retrograde phase right now in Scorpio and he will be moving uh, retrograde into the sign of Sagittarius so this means that Sagittarian suns, you're going to have a Mercury retrograde in your first house of self. The first house rules your appearance, name, weight, shape, hair, face, makeup, wardrobe, uh, your um, profile. So this is Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, all of those other social media places, LinkedIn. Um, this is about um, your brand, your brand name. So if you have a business where you, your face is, uh, you know, out there selling things, then you can expect some kind of backwards and forwards uh, contractual negotiations or messages. Mercury does rule commerce. He rules um, short distance travel. He rules the written word, the spoken word, videos and images. Um, he rules um, self-publishing. Uh, he rules text messages, emails, faxes, um, any way in which you can get your message across, so to speak. So this could be, for instance, let's say you are a um, Sagittarian sun and you are a, 
I don't know, a massage therapist and you have clients that you have to travel across town to see. So this could be really seriously that the idea that some of your appointments are going to fall through. Um, you may not be able to get to some of the places. There could be bad weather. There could be um, Mercury is a trickster. Um, and so just when you think things are going OK, you can expect them to reverse. So plan accordingly. Um, and everybody, no matter what your sun sign, has Mercury and Sagittarius somewhere in their charts. So um, you need to plan accordingly for these delays and these conflicts, perhaps in scheduling and or communications, or just plain old confusion about yourself. So with that said, we're going to do a quick nine card reading. We will clarify with one of the two Sibila decks. And depending upon what the message is uh, presented by the cards, we will pull one, either one angel answer or one romance angel card. Okay, here we go. Nine cards down. Two of wands. I will show you these cards. Wow, knight of wands. <laughs> um, and then the two of cups. Well, well, well. Hmm. Seven of Cups, there's that confusion. Here's our Sagittarius card. There's the Three of Pentacles. Two things coming together to make a third thing. Trying to build a firm foundation. Seeking, perhaps, um, advice on how to start a project, build a project, fund a project. But trying to make it solid. Wow, three twos. There's the Two of Pentacles. So remember when I'm talking to you about those oppositions, the Two of Wands is about the focus and determination. The Two of Cups is about the emotional state of the situation. The Two of Coins is either going to be either the financial situation or it's going to be the idea uh, of trying to do two things at one time. Oh, well, and there's our Venus card. Remember I was talking about Venus in retrograde. There she is. There's a page of Cups. So I have two people here um, per se could be three so this could be a mom and um, her, her kid remember I'm talking to you about Scorpio and those deadly serious financial agreements that have a sexual component to them here we are um, but Venus uh, not only rules love she is the relationship planet um, in order for us to, to get anywhere in the world we have to be able to relate to people and we have to do it in a manner in which we can gain their cooperation, okay? Um, website members, if you don't know your planets, your bodies, and your asteroids, you really are cheating yourself in terms of the information that your chart can give you. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I have over almost 400 articles on the, on the website. And I can put it there, but I can't force you to read it, and I can't force you to learn it. But there's so much that the stars can tell you if you are paying attention and you understand who the players are, what the story is surrounding them, the myths, and then what was the outcome. Here is the strength card. So there's our Leo card. And Leo is also about the self. Um, what is over this? We have the magician. There's our Mercury card. There he is. Now... Uh, the magician rules both, uh, because he represents Mercury, he rules both the sign of Gemini and Sagittarius. So when Mercury retrogrades into Sagittarius, he's going to oppose the house of Gemini, okay? Sagittarius is about uh, publishing, um, higher education, foreign people, belief systems in terms of whether you believe in astrology or you don't, whether you are a Catholic or a Baptist, um, or whether you don't believe in anything at all. Um, it also rules um, the World Wide Web exports. So this is the idea. There's going to be some kind of opposition between what you're trying to do in the, in the getting your message across to the wider uh, audience as opposed to what you're doing on a local level. So typically for me, because I am, um, my North and South node are in Gemini, Sagittarius respectively. So this Mercury retrograde is going to transit across my South node. So that means I have some karmic work that I'm gonna have to finish. And then this cycle will be complete. And then come 2019, things are gonna be better for me. But 
uh, at the same time, um, because I know that I might be having issues with, say, getting my message across to you guys or um, people not understanding what it is that I'm saying or what I'm doing, or I could experience some kind of, I don't know, internet glitch or something like that, that tells me that I need to work more so here on a local level where I'm at in my neighborhood. Um, Venus will be retrograding back from Scorpio into the sign of Libra. The Empress is the planet of Venus and it co-rules both Taurus and Libra. Libra is the partnership house. Most people think it's think it's simply the house of marriage. It, it is in the sense that you can get married. That will show your marriage partner or spouse, the seventh house does. But the way that the marriage really works operates in the eighth house, the house of Scorpio. Typically in the seventh house, you get married or you move in together. Then that means you, you have joint bills together. Your name's on the lease. You get mortgages together. You get credit cards together. You have a joint bank account together. Uh, that's the eighth house. But the seventh house just means that legally or publicly, you declare that you are in partnership with someone. So this can even be a business idea. Um, we see that here. Um, and so I'm looking at three people for sure. The possibility of three people. One of these people can be, uh, like I said, a mom um, or a mother figure or someone who um, is very kind uh, and has a lot of abundance and also very grounded, but can also be someone who's quite smothering and, and overbearing. Okay. Um, these are two types of messages here. For me, the Knights, those of you who have been, been with me for a while, the Knights never really read like people. They always read like events. And what this is telling me, past, present, future, past, present, future, interplay of the cards. Let me show you this. Here's the Two of Wands. The Knight of Wands. And the Two of Cups. Some of you are going to be revisiting a partnership issue. And in fact... Some of you are going to be dealing with someone coming back from your past, a past lover. Now, what do I always say to you guys who've been with me for a while about past lovers showing up under a Mercury retrograde? That shit ain't meant to last. Um, if you want to go jump in bed and have hot sex, you can do that. But I can promise you that situation will not last. It basically is an idea for you to determine what are you worth and what is that situation worth to you. Uh, Taurus rules values and value systems in a partnership. So you are always the most important, no matter what relationship you are in, you, there's one um, component that never changes no matter what relationship you find you, and that's you. So therefore you are always the most important person or the, almost the most important factor always within the context of any relationship. Okay. Um, and we can see you're going to be revisiting this issue. That's what retrogrades mean. Retrogrades mean to rework, revise, reassess, reevaluate, retweak, redo, go back over something. No matter what planet is in retrograde, it's always going to be whatever the planet represents that's in retrograde is what you're going to be going back over. Depending on the house, whether it's in the sign of Libra or the seventh house, will tell you the theme of what you're going to be dealing with. Okay, that's how the astrology works. Now, here I have the seven of cups. There's a three of pentacles. Here's a two of pentacles. Now, you notice we lose a pentacle here. And for some of you, this could be uh, either a, some kind of financial hiccup, okay, or delay. But it could also be the idea that what you are doing, you're going to have to, you may take on more than you can actually chew here in one respect. And then you're going to be trying to balance a bunch of things at the same time. Um, two of Pentacles. Then we have the Empress. I've shown you her. Here is the Page of Cups. And then here is the Strength card. Now the Strength card is quite interesting. Uh, and if you notice... It has the lemon escape. Um, to me, um, this is the infinity symbol, but it also represents the north and south nodes. Okay. Um, going over something, redoing it over and over again. Okay. 
And instead of approaching it from perhaps a more aggressive stance um, or being fearful of it, it just tells you to gently and but confidently face those fears and do whatever it is you need to do. Now, I can't look at, I have these two major arcana cards. I cannot look at these two cards, okay, because they are court cards. But what I can tell you is that two twos speak to a slight concern in regards to a new partnership, relationship, and or romance or commitment. And this could be any kind of partnership. Okay. Now, three twos um, can mean having, and I want to make sure I get this right. So just bear with me a second. There's two meanings of two twos. So <laughs> let me get this right for you. Um, the two twos... Here's the first interpretation, two twos. As, uh, two twos tells of a commitment or an engagement, but three twos could be warning of an extra marital affair. There it is. Okay. Now, let me give you the other interpretation of the two twos and the three twos. Two twos speak to harmonious changes and communications and the need to make a choice. Remember, we're talking about that. That's what Venus represents. And three twos talk about a wedding. So no matter how you cut it, okay, this is a partnership issue for some of you. We see this in the center, this three of pentacles coming together, trying to build something. This could be the idea that you and a partner... In, in whatever context of partnership means, uh, have been negotiating or going backwards and forwards over something. We can see that there's a bunch of confusion here. This saying having so many options that you don't know what to choose from or being confused. This card is also about the fantasy of something. Okay. Instead of it being a real relationship, maybe this is an internet relationship and you or someone else is under the delusion that this is a real relationship. Well, it's not. Why? Because it hasn't formed in the actual physical world. She's an earth card. Okay. But this card also says that positively, if you can focus on that thing that is most important, then you can get all of those things. So some of you will be revisiting this issue. Most definitely so. Now, I also have two threes here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So again, this to me is speaking about either an extramarital affair, okay, some kind of cheating going on here in, in, in whatever context. And there are more ways than one to cheat on somebody. It's not just emotional cheating. There's financial cheating. Uh, there is, um, <clears throat> oh, shit, there's all kinds of cheating, ways that people can take from you um, and misconstrue things. We see that here, the two to the seven, that's five of cups right there. That's three wands. This is five coins. <coughs> this is nine cups. I'm sorry, eight cups, seven to the page. And this is three cups. Um, these are two different types of messages. Some of you <coughs> may be getting an offer that comes completely out of the blue something unexpected, something that comes back around. And I think others of you are going to be trying to um, determine what the truth is. You see, the strength card represents Leo, which represents the sun. And the sun illuminates things for you. Okay? It shows you things in the clear light of day. Sometimes what we see in the clear light of day is not pleasant. But at least now we know the truth. Right? Right? So let's take a look, if we can, and see what, we're going to take these out. And what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the two of wands, two of cups, seven of cups, three of coins, two of coins, as they relate to the strength and the empress card. Okay, now two threes, one of you is craving more change and excitement. Here's the two threes, and that could be this energy. Somebody who's very fickle. This is a uh, Sagittarian Leo energy. Um, someone who's quick to change their mind or to move backwards and forward. Fickle. You can't get a can't get a lock on that person. 
Um, and then the other two threes says a small but pleasant surprise. We can see that here. But it also talks about, um, <clears throat> again, more than three people being involved in a situation. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this Two of Wands, if we can, as it relates to the Empress and the Strength card. Here it is. The Two of Wands with the Empress is a message that opportunities are abound and opportunity is imminent. So establish yourself and set ideas into motion. The time is fruitful, so make the most of it. And this could be what this is. is remember I said it's kind of like you're taking on something else. And now you're going to have to figure out how you can uh, juggle all of these things at one time. Uh, the Empress represents abundance and growth. Okay. But she can also be over expansive and she can be greedy and selfish. All right. So you might want to watch that energy. Two of Cups. This is a really interesting spread to me. I know you guys probably hear that from lots of different... Oh, it's so interesting. But it, it really is the energies that are showing up here. Here is the Two of Cups. Doesn't tell me anything, the Two of Cups here. But as you can see, even though this is the past... This says that you have two choices and two options. That's always what twos represent. It's a choice, it's an option, it's a duality. It is an opposition. And both of these cards are traveling backwards. Seven of Cups. Nothing. Two of, I'm sorry, three of coins. And we're going to pull cards on this seven of cups. Okay? And we're going to pull cards on this two of wands. And sometimes it's going to be about working another job. Okay? It could be that simple having to, to balance your, your, because your finances are going to be, and you got to work two jobs for a while. So to watch your finances, there could be some, somebody's, confusing the situation or there is some confusion about what is most important or how do you get those things that you want um, again it's choices and options and decisions three of coins with any other any other three numbered card I'm sorry that's not right it says threes in a reading suggest that more than one person is involved in a situation. It also suggests that there may be a period of suspended activity before future successes are brought to fruition. And that could be that energy, most definitely with the Magician card. Now we're going to look at the Two of Pentacles. Why? Because we know that things are going to slow down. <laughs> um, that's typically how it works. Okay, nothing with the uh, Two of Pentacles as they relate. So what I'm going to do right now, the first thing I want to look at, I'm going to look at this uh, Seven of Cups, and then I'm going to look at this Two of Coins. Um, I also want to take a look at that Magician, because sometimes the Magician is the card of trickery and deception. Um, and that's what Mercury is known for, particularly in his retro shade or retrograde phase. Um, things seem to be one way, um, and all of the information that you're getting seems to be correct and true, and then suddenly it becomes an information blackout, or things begin to look a little bit sketchy. Um, Mercury is a trickster, so this is definitely the aspect that you're going to have to go back over something, for sure. Seven of Cups. There's the Casa. Now, the Casa represents actual house, physical property. That's what Taurus rules. Your, your personal finances, uh, uh, what do you call it? Your movable property. But then we're also talking about that opposition against Scorpio. So this could be the idea that there's some confusion over some type of property issue, um, land issue. But also, this looks like a bank to me. So finances and um, security. 
This is the discovery. So we're, we're trying to get to the truth of something. Something is puzzling us. We're not quite clear on it. Um, and we're trying to get to the truth. That's a man of science. And perhaps this is a discovery that, that you have inadvertently done something that you should not have done. This is stupid actions and stupid behavior. This could be the idea that someone has, in effect, kind of pulled the wool over your eyes. Remember, we're talking about a marriage, a commitment, and or an engagement. But we're also talking about, ah, uh, no, that was two, um, two nights. And I don't see another night here. It's definitely two kinds of messages. One that comes in quite suddenly, perhaps from the past, that offers this opportunity to build something. Um, I think that is really kind of a sincere offer here. And maybe you don't trust it because there's something about it that you don't know yet. Hmm. Definitely concerning uh, a choice or a duality or an opposition with a friend or family member. Um, perhaps saying that someone in that in your midst like that is perpetrating a fraud on you. There's a duality to the situation, something that you don't know that they may be hiding from you. They're actually juggling two people, okay? Two situations. And the Bambino. Now, the Bambino speaks to something new, new beginnings. It also speaks to a baby. Um, but it speaks to the start of something and we see it here. Let's take a look at Mercury up here, the magician, the trickster. Uh, this could be the idea that somebody is telling you they know uh, X, Y, and Z, and they're trying to get you to do something, but the truth is they don't know squat about it. <laughs> okay, so um, it's it's a deception. So what do you need to do? Uh, trust your instincts. And then go to those people who do have skills and knowledge. That's what the magician is all about. Look, there's the single man, the sacerdote. This implies a counselor. Um, it implies on this magician card. Um, the magician card is the magician is able to create things out of thin air. So this could be the idea that someone has been perpetrating the idea that they are single, and usually 13th, 14th century priest. Yeah, they were in the church, but they had children, they had mistresses, they had wives, they drank, they gambled, they did drugs. Um, <laughs> you know, they hid things. It's interesting because they both have on robes. Yeah. There's the Giovanni Fanchula. Attraction to a young girl. But this card also, to me, always represents uh, the energy comes across as the Virgin. Now, somehow or another through religious text or belief systems or just what we were told, a Virgin is someone who's considered to never have had sex. And that is not the true meaning of the word Virgin. It comes from the word, ver um, the Latin word Virgal. I think that's correct. And what it means is that um, it is a woman who has no master. In other words, she has not been married. Don't mean she ain't had no damn sex. It just means that she has no master. She is fully capable of taking care of herself. Well, we know throughout history that some of those women got burned at the stake. They were too independent, right? And the Vecchia Signora, now, I don't know if this is saying that this is somebody coming to speak to an older female relative about a younger female. Remember, we're talking about deadly serious financial agreements with the sexual component. So this could be about a young teenage girl. It could also be the approach of someone who may approach your mom to say, hey, look, I want to marry her, this, that, and the other. But it is this card... 
that tells me that there may be some deception, something that you don't know coming from someone within the confines of a friendship or a family member now. And you might have to confront this head on. Okay. Now, I, look, just quickly, let me take a look at this page of cups. Because this pleasant surprise may not be the kind of surprise that we think it is. <laughs> Um, the pleasant surprise could be the idea that you get that information that you need. Definitely, something is coming back around for some of you. <clears throat> the surprise. That's literally what this card is. But it says it's a consolation. In other words, it's not first place. It may be second or third. Um, I was going out to fish for X, Y, and Z, but I caught this instead. Okay, it's a consolation. Here is theft of goods and or services. Now, how many of you have heard me say that um, people don't have to just come in and steal money from you. They can steal your peace of mind, your trust, your faith, your belief, your time. Okay, what are those things? Those are resources. Those are your personal resources. And I always tell you, sometimes there is a person and or a situation that is more important than gold or money. There's a choice coming up here for you. Amore, the love card. But you see, he's blind. He's blindly shooting his arrow at this. So to me, for some of you, this means that you, uh, regardless of whatever's being said or shown to you, you will go forward with this. Um, for others of you, um, it speaks kind of like the card of forgiveness. You're going to forgive someone for that. And maybe what this is all about. Maybe this is the idea that somebody from the past comes back and you get a chance to uh, clear the slate so that you can now move on okay can mean a lot of things hmm. but this card also speaks to sudden passion and passion is not always love or desire it could be anger or fear <laughs> okay passion has many many connotations um, like uh, excited utterances I'll kill him that's an excited utterance. Well, that's born out of passion. But that passion is what? Anger? All right. Formulate one question. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull two cards here. Uh, I'm going to pull first a romance angel card. Now, this is going to be happening through the month of November. Uh, again, the messages will not resonate. That requires a personal reading. And in a personal reading, I take your personal information, your full name and your birth date, uh, and the full name and birth date of the other people you want to include in the reading, meditate on that, and then I pull the cards. And that is more specific to your situation. For some people, they can come here and look at this, and it's talking exactly about their situation. For other people, it just doesn't resonate. Um, as I say, don't, you know, don't be upset because... It ain't telling your story. And I'm giving you an opportunity to come in and check on your story. Now, playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. But look at that card. Look, just look at that imagery. This could also be somebody that you're dealing with who is quite playful. That Knight of Wands energy. That card is known as the player card. <laughs> that one and that Six of Coins. Every positive has a negative. Otherwise, you don't. There's no balance. Okay. One more time. Yeah. 
helpful people. And then sometimes the help that people give ain't really designed to help you, is it? Okay. Playfulness. The romance angels are cherubs who embody all things romantic. And who have a happy, youthful sense of playfulness. They delight in the wonders of love and ask you to do the same. The angels want you to fall in love. Hold on. See all of this playfulness, drunkenness, blind passion. The angels want you, want to help you fall back in love with life again by guiding you to enjoy yourself. This comes from a spirit of joy and adventure. The angels ask you, when was the last time you had fun? And if you don't remember, then it's long overdue for you to add some playtime into your schedule. The angels say that fun is a necessity, not a luxury. The activity can be free of charge, such as exploring nature, auditioning for a local theatrical production, joining a community sports team, or trying something new. Playfulness is a good investment of your time as it will renew your energy levels and elevate your mood. Playtime is essential in relationships too, to keep the free-spirited components of dating alive. Plan regular date nights with your partner and take turns creatively planning fun activities such as miniature golf, karaoke, walking through a flower garden, or flying kites. And if this is the idea that, um, you know, you're coming out of a breakup of a relationship, then it's asking you to go out and do something nice for yourself. Why? You are the most important component in any relationship. And some things and some people are more important than gold. Helpful people. This card indicates that it is time to expand your circle of friends. Or you may find yourself uh, needing to do some professional networking. Make time to branch out in order to create the personal or career connections necessary to be happy and successful. This card can also indicate that your situation requires the input of those who can assist you in accomplishing the task before you. This may include professionals in fields related to your question or others who work for or around you. It could also include people in your personal life who have experience that would be useful. This card lets you know that someone will be entering your life soon who can help make your dreams come true. But only you can captain your own ship. Okay, that's what I have for you, Fire Signs, for November. I hope those messages help. Again, if you want to come over and take part in the pay what you want, it's only a week and then it goes away until next year. Click on this I and sign up for the free newsletter. Till next time, namaste.